Well, summer is definitely here. It's 29 degrees today, mid-afternoon, and it's super hot. Get into the shade, it's not so bad, but just standing in the sunshine here, really hot today. Uh, with that, uh, we've needed to make some decisions based on our cold weather strains. About six days ago, we had a heat spike and we had to harvest all of our king oyster and our blue oyster. Then it cooled down again and then today it's starting to heat up for another three days or so. So I got Simon to do a massive harvest of all our blue oysters. I'll take you into the fridge in a bit and I'll show you that. But these are kind of, kind of some of the strategies that we need to do so that we have product that is at the quality that I'm looking for. As it warms up, our cold weather strains can really get affected by the heat. Um, with that in mind, we're running into some problems with our grain spawn as it warms up and we're getting these uh, wet spots in our grain and we just had a big blow to the business. We lost about maybe 70 bags of our warm weather L moisture strain and you know this is definitely something that I wasn't expecting but something I'm very familiar with as, uh, as we grow this business. Uh, you know problems come up and you need to address them and you know take some time to really figure them out because the stress of running a business can be almost overwhelming when stuff goes wrong and in this case uh, this, these 70 bags they represent about 1500, 1500 blocks that would have grown our greenhouse and essentially two greenhouses worth of production wiped away completely so all of these grain bags here we had to pull out of the lab they have all these bacterial wet spots and I'll see if I can get a close-up to show you guys exactly what that is but basically the, the grain kernels are coated in water and they've, they've essentially swelled up and we're getting this bacterial ooze coming out of the center of the grain and in some cases we even get black mold popping up and we can see some of that in the grain kernels down here so this is uh, unfortunately uh, something I've experienced with in the past um, and this this kind of happens as the season warms up and I just haven't made the appropriate adjustments yet uh, but I'm going to now um, I'm not sure if you can see black mold in here or not so we got you know some black mold just popping up here and right there so you know this this lab was actually really bad we lost about 95 percent of our grain bags and uh, lab two those those grain uh, bags were done maybe about a week later second batch and so far we've lost at least 60 percent so definitely a big blow um, but you know with that I've taken some time and I've learned from what's going on I've talked to a couple people about this the great thing about sharing is that you get a lot of people who start doing similar stuff to what you're doing but they often take a different path so I talked to Joel actually today from Stellar Gourmet Mushrooms and he reminded me that how important it is actually to rinse the grain this is something that I used to do last year um, we ran trials with our grain spawn last year and it was more labor intensive and I was rinsing the grain by hand after i have done the, the lime process and we were, we were essentially rinsing all that sludge and all that fermented bacteria that uh, you're going to get over time as you do the, the three day soak and you know I hadn't seen a problem for the last three months and our grain spawn was working really good but then as it started warming up mid-May we're starting to lose everything and the bacterial ooze um, or the wet spots in the bags is starting to be very very significant so what we're going to do um, moving forward is I've, I was actually going to do grain spawn tomorrow we dumped that and now we're going to do sawdust spawn with our hardwood fuel pellets and we're going to catch up by using a second generation L moisture grain spawn that I do have that worked out we're going to transfer that to sawdust and I'm going to take my good jars of G1 L moisture spawn and I'm going to transfer that to more sawdust. So essentially we're going to do double the amount of spawn that I normally would need. It's all going to go on sawdust. And then I'm going to start preparing to do our grain spawn the following week with the necessary adjustments that I think uh, is going to make this process work. So 
We're still gonna do uh, a two day soak. So I'll soak the grain overnight and then day one, the next day and then day two. So essentially two and a half days and then we're gonna add the hydrated lime for 12 hours and then bag in the morning. The only difference is, is we're gonna, I'm gonna set up a drip line so that cold water is continually adding into our totes where the buckets of grain are soaking so that the water temperature is always the same. So we're going to continually add cold water to the system so that we don't really get the fermenting and, and the warming of the water which will then essentially cause the grain kernels to swell, more bacteria to thrive, which is what I think we're seeing here. So I'm going to get that set up. I'm going to use an IBC tote which has a drain in it, cut the top off, we'll get our buckets in there and then set up a drip line just on top and we'll continually add cold water to the system. And for now, I'll focus uh, on sawdust spawn. And I've already had a really successful uh, trial with Lion's Mane with our hardwood fuel pellets, which I talked in one of our other vlogs. And I'm gonna continue that, but I'm gonna use that for Elm Oyster, Pink Oyster, and Yellow Oyster for now. And the only difference, uh, that the only, the only thing that I notice is that we need to shake those bags up about five to ten days in uh, and really kind of break up the hardwood fuel pellets and let that mycelium expand out in the bag to get a really good colonization. But you know as, as summer progresses on our farm and because we're a seasonal farm and everything is outdoors, uh, really the answer might be just to do sawdust. We don't really have a controlled environment and as temperatures increase in the summer this is always going to be a problem that, I, that we have on our farm. And right now, all I have to, all, what I need to do is worry about is I need to focus on getting production out. I want to make sure that we have a good summer. So there's lots of room uh, that I can that I can work with, as in like we have our cold weather Elm Oyster uh, spawn in refrigeration right now, and I have extra of that. I have lots of lion's mane and I can do extra sawdust spawn that hopefully we can catch up and kind of meet somewhere in the middle of what we're looking to hit for this summer. So anyways guys, these are some of the adjustments that, that we need to make and what's really important to know is that the only reason why we're successful is that I'm always willing to adjust and this is something that I've learned over the years is that stuff is always going to go wrong you're never going to be prepared for it but you need to adjust and think outside the box and what you and you need to think what you can do to make things work so that's what i'm working on right now and hopefully i have an update for you in a couple weeks